on the basis of valency or the combining capacity of an element the elements are divided into four types monovalent divalent trivalent tetravalent monovalent means mono means one valent means valency valency one elements with valency one are known as monovalent example sodium potassium lithium rubidium elements with valency 2 are known as divalent di means 2 valent means valency so valency 2 like copper zinc magnesium calcium elements with valency 3 are known as trivalent tri means 3 valent means valency valency 3 of iron and aluminium elements with valency 4 are known as tetravalent tetra means 4 valent means valency 4 valency of carbon and sulfur please remember now let's quickly solve this question you are given an iron na 11 23 and one positive charge is there can you tell the atomic number by looking at this iron the atomic number is 11 right at the bottom you can see the number 11 atomic number mass number what is the mass number 23 neutrons neutrons is equal to mass number minus the atomic number we have done this earlier 23 minus 11 how much 12 so 12 are the neutrons in sodium ion then protons protons is equal to the atomic number so 11 protons and i can see over here there is positive charge how much single positive so there will be one negative charge less in the sodium ion so electron will become 10 positive charge is one unit more than the electrons that's why it is having one positive charge on it is it clear now let's solve the second question ion is given oxide ion 8 16 and 2 negative atomic number will be 8 right mass number 16 number of the neutrons mass number minus atomic number 16 minus 8 how much 8 so 8 neutrons are there how many protons protons equals to the atomic number 8 protons electrons we can see over here it's a charged ion and it is having two extra negative charge so two more electrons will be there 8 Plus two, how much? Eight plus two, how much? Ten electrons. That's why it is having two negative charge. Now let us understand variable valency. Students, what do you understand by the term variable? Variable means something which is not fixed and it keeps on changing. So few elements, their valency keeps on changing in the chemical reaction. okay so if an element show more than one valency it means they are showing variable valency now why is it so what is the reason behind the variable valency why the elements they show the variable valency because few elements they lose their electrons from its inner orbits too means few of the elements they are not just losing from the outer or the valence shell they are losing the electrons from the inner shells too okay this is the reason that of showing the variable valency now for example variable valencies of the metals fe2 positive fe3 positive now this iron is showing two valency as well as the three valency okay so this is known as a ferrous and this is known as ferric so for lower valency of the metal ions suffix us is used okay for lower valency you will be using ous so ferrous and this will be ferric okay for the higher valency you will be using the suffix ic ic okay here it will be cu positive means one valency of copper and here two valency of the copper so lower valency will have the name cuprous 
and the higher valency will have the name cuprick okay hg mercury so hg positive one valency of mercury here and mercury having the two valency also okay these are few of the examples now variable valencies of the non metals in the case of the non metals carbon please remember it shows sometimes two valency and sometimes four valency and nitrogen in few reactions it will be showing one or two three four or five valency also here we can see the metal ions with the variable valency for the lower valency of the metal ions suffix us is used o u s and for the higher valency suffix ic i c is used example f e 2 positive f e 3 positive which is the lower valency 2 is a lower valency so f e 2 positive will be named as ferrous ion okay f e 3 positive as we can see it is a higher valency than 2 valency so it will be ferric ion Cu positive, Cu two positive. Here's copper having one valency, and here copper having two valency, which is lower. Cu positive is lower, so it is known as cuprous ion, and Cu two positive will be cuprous ion. Okay. Now here mercury, Hg positive, Hg two positive. Valency of Hg positive is one valency. And Hg two positive valency is two, so which is lower valency? Hg positive, only one valency. So this is known as mercurous ion. Hg two positive ion will be termed as mercuric ion. Here lead showing four valency as well as two valency. So lower valency Pb two positive, known as plumbus ion. Pb four positive, known as plumbic ion. Sn two positive, Sn four positive. Okay, here we have the tin, right, with two valency and four valency. So, the Sn two positive lower valency will be termed as tannous ion, and Sn four with a higher valency, it will be termed as stannic ion. Okay. So when you need to tell the valency, you don't have to tell positive or a negative. You just have to tell the number. For iron, it is valency two, and over here for iron, valency three. For copper, one valency. Here, copper two valency. Okay. And when you are naming the ions, you can use for lower valency us, for a higher valency ik. Okay. Now in this you can see the positive radicals or you can see all the positive ions over here or you can see the cations okay so with the valency 1 with valency 2 with valency 3 hydrogen h positive copper which is cuprous okay cu positive Mercurus Hg positive, sodium Na positive, potassium K positive, silver Ag positive and ammonium NH4 positive. As we can see they have a single positive charge. So valency is 1. Okay. Valency 2, iron, ferrous, Fe2 positive, copper is cuprous, Cu2 positive, mercuric, Hg2 positive, Calcium Ca2 positive, zinc Zn2 positive. This is plumbus, that is Pb2 positive, magnesium Mg2 positive, manganus Mn2 positive. As you can see, they are carrying two positive charge, right? So the valency will be two. In the third category, we have ferric Fe3 positive, auric. It means gold, Au3 positive, aluminium, Al3 positive. As you can see, they are carrying three positive charge on it. Valency becomes three. This table shows 
the negative radicals also known as negative ions or anions with the valency 1, valency 2, valency 3. So in valency 1 we have hydride H negative, hydroxide OH single negative, chloride Cl single negative, bromide Br single negative, iodide I single negative, nitrite NO2 single negative, nitrate NO3 single negative, bicarbonate HCO3 single negative, bi means hydrogen is present, okay, bicarbonate, one hydrogen is present, okay, bisulfate, again hydrogen will be present with the sulfate, HSO4 single negative, chlorate ClO3 single negative, permanganate MnO4 single negative, as we can see, they are carrying only single negative charge. So, the valency will be 1. Let's check for the valency 2. Oxide O2 negative, carbonate CO3 2 negative, sulfide S2 negative, sulfite SO3 2 negative, sulfate SO4 2 negative, dichromate Cr2 O7 2 negative. Dichromate, di means 2, chromate, chromium atoms, two chromium atoms are present. Cr2 means two chromium atoms are there in dichromate. Okay. So, as we can see, they have the two negative charges on them. Right. So, the valency becomes two. In valency three, we have nitride N3 negative, phosphate PO4 3 negative. As we can see, they have three negative charges on them. So, the valency becomes 3. Now, we will understand how to write the chemical formula. The method which is used is known as crisscross method to write the formula. There are 5 steps which are Step 1, write the symbol of the positive radical to the left and negative radical to the right side of a compound. Okay. Step 2, put the valency on top, right side of both the radicals. On the top of the radicals, right side, you will be putting the valency. Step 3, ignore positive and negative signs of the valency and then interchange the valencies of the radicals. Okay. Step 5, write the interchange valency numbers to the lower side of the radical. Okay. Let us write the formula for the aluminium sulfate step by step. First step is to write the symbol of the positive radical to the left and negative radical to the right side of the compound. So, I know aluminium is positive. So, I will write towards the left and sulfate SO4. Okay. And its valency is 2 negative. And aluminium put the valency on top that is 3 positive. Okay. Now, after putting the valency on the top right side of the radicals, you need to ignore the positive and the negative sign and interchange these valencies of the radicals. Okay, so I will write aluminium and sulfate SO4 and I will just do crisscross method by interchanging the valencies. Now, I will going to ignore the positive and negative and Sulfate will be getting 3 number. So, I will write 3 at the bottom. Whole 3 because SO4 sulfate is a radical. It's one single unit. So, you have to put a bracket and show 3. Okay. And SO4 was 2 negative. So, 2 goes to aluminium. Aluminium will be Al2 now. 2 goes to the bottom. Okay. Now, the formula becomes Al2 bracket SO4 3. This is the formula for the aluminium sulfate. Al2 SO4 in bracket 3. Okay. So, this is the way to write the formula for aluminium sulfate. Now, let us write the chemical formula for ammonium phosphate. Step 1 is write the symbol of positive radical to the left and negative radical to the right side of a compound. Positive radical is ammonium and negative radical is phosphate. So, I will write ammonium NH4 and 
phosphate PO4. Now put their valencies ammonium 1 positive and phosphate 3 negative. Okay. Now step 2. Here you need to exchange the valencies of the radicals. So I will use the crisscross method, use the arrows. Okay. Now ammonium NH4 will be receiving 3 number. Okay. And PO4 will receive 1 number. So NH4 whole thrice. Okay. This is a whole one unit NH4 whole one unit so it will be in a bracket and 3 will be outside now PO4 as we can see it will be receiving one number so we can ignore this one number and the final formula becomes NH4 put it in the bracket 3 outside and PO4 this is ammonium phosphate formula is it clear class? This is the formula for ammonium phosphate. Students, now we have come to an end of this chapter. I hope whatever is discussed in chapter 4 is clear to all of you. Please go through the videos again and do the assignment. And let me know if you have any doubts. Thank you and have a nice day.